Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about the overall pattern over the next couple of weeks, as well as what may be to come in the tropics going into October. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is Thursday, September the 16th. What we're looking at here, let's take you back over the last uh, three days when Nicholas made uh, landfall. Here's the overall rain that uh, for the United States, you can definitely see in the blue shaded area, we've had some double digit rain totals uh, right along uh, the, the, the Texas Gulf, Gulf Coast here into uh, Louisiana, as well as portions of uh, Mississippi and Alabama here. With some very heavy rain, it's still continuing with uh, Nicholas as it's going to be stalling out and still dropping very heavy rain along the coastal regions for still several days to come. A lot of these areas up here in the in the southeast as well as the northeast still picked up some good totals over the last uh, couple of days. And then some welcome rains came back into the Pacific Northwest. And I think that's actually just going to continue as we go through the weekend. So let's take you... Uh, Give you a snapshot of where we are currently right now for september since we are technically around the middle of the month so so far here's the temperature anomalies as far as like your average means go and you can definitely see we're above average for a good chunk of the western part of the u.s as far as like between the highs and the low temperatures uh we've been a little bit below average in portions of the southeast as as well as the into the mid-atlantic states where a lot of these areas have just been pretty heavily rained on. So that's a, one of the reasons why you've been a kind of below average for uh, the month. But now let's take you through what's happening for the entire year. So this is the average means of where we stand so far for 2021 from January 1st through September the 14th. And yes, been pretty much above average as far as like temperature anomalies go for much of the west much of our northern interior united states as well as the northeast we've been actually seeing below average anomalies predominantly averaging out of those, the last nine months and the coolest below average anomaly area in, in the entire united states has been in oklahoma as well into texas so that's the temperature so now let's take a look at the rainfall this is over the last 90 days. So this is pretty much a good snapshot of summer. So the, mid the middle of June, all the way through the middle of September, you can definitely see, here's the chart on the right-hand side. All these areas in green, that is above average precipitation. And the darker the green, that is the most, you know, higher above average. So when you're seeing these darker green shaded areas, that's two to 300% more than what you typically see over those 90 days. Yes, it's been really dry out west in the Pacific Northwest, but they had a very active monsoon. So you had some welcome rains and much of Arizona and to uh, Utah, as well as in New Mexico. Still into Texas, you had a lot of welcome rains with a lot of areas above average. I mean, yeah, along the coastal regions, yes, <laughs> well above average down here in the Southeast, but a good chunk of the, the Ohio Valley as well as the Northeast have all been uh, above average. So it's been a pretty wet month for a good chunk of the United States. Let's take a look at what the percentage, I mean, like the precipitation above average and what that would typically imply so you can definitely see along the coast here is yeah over those 90 days you're some areas are upwards to 20 uh, 12 inches upwards to 20 inches above average i mean here's louisiana i mean into more or less the new orleans area 28 inches above average so it's been a very active rainy wet season for a good chunk Again, all these areas in the blue, you're talking almost double digit, if not more, above average. So in anybody in the, the green uh, shaded area, those are all above average precipitation. So it's been predominantly wet for, for a good chunk of the central and especially the southeast as well as the mid-Atlantic. Even in the northeast has been really wet. The only dry spot, noticeably dry spot, has been the west and the pacific northwest where they've had all the wildfires and that record heat uh for a good part of, of of summer now let's take you through the drought here's the latest update on the drought index this comes out every thursday this is the newest newest update 
as, as of September the 16th. And man, look at this. I mean, it took a major dent out of the drought with all that welcome above average rain and into uh, Arizona. I mean, all this area was, was in the exceptionally drought category. It's knocked several levels off that. So that's been pretty impressive monsoon season and much welcome for these areas. Unfortunately, we couldn't extend that to a good chunk into California. But man, the rains are going to be coming back for the Pacific Northwest and they're going to be eating away at this drought as well as Idaho here over the next coming weeks ahead out, of, out here in the central and into the, the eastern parts. Yeah, there's not that many areas around here that's going to be that that's actually in uh, drought. Some some drought stages are starting to come back in Texas, but for the most part, we're doing fairly well for a good chunk of the central, the southeast, the mid Atlantic, as well as the northeast uh, parts of the United States. But the, I mentioned the rains are coming back. We've been talking about this for a while now, and it's going to come to fruition this weekend. In, in and around the Portland area. If I zoomed in from the National Weather Service, yeah, from Friday through Sunday night, we're talking you know multi-inch rains, anywhere from one to three inch rains in and around the uh, Portland area. And much of that is just gonna be extended, which will go over uh, into a, a good chunk of the Pacific Northwest, even Northern California as well. So now let's take you out in the tropics and what's happening there. I mean, there's Nicholas, it's pretty much stalled out. It's not a depression anymore. It's, it's basically an upper level low system, but it doesn't, it's not it's going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. It gets trapped between those high pressures. It's still gonna be around for several days to come dumping some very heavy rain with just waves and waves and waves of uh, rain. Here's, uh, you got in, you got several Invest out here. You got Invest 96L, you got Invest 95L. Both of these, I think, will get named a tropical storm. The next on the list are Odette, as well as uh, Peter. And then we have this, another wave that's coming off the African coast. But a lot of indications, all these more or less take it out to sea. So now let's take a look at that. Here's the latest uh, EPS uh, European guidance over the next seven days. And it has this system in the Bahamas where it is currently right now. Once it gets off the East Coast here, it does actually get into a little bit, little bit more favorable environment. So I do feel it's actually gonna be forming into a tropical storm over the next seven days. But the good thing is with these fronts coming across, it's not gonna be making impact to land. So I'm not expecting that. And then we also have 96L that's coming across. Now, a good chunk of the European models actually wanna take this well up out open, into the open waters out out to sea as well as this tropical wave off here off the coast of Africa. Now let's take a look at the latest uh, uh, G, uh, uh, GP, GFS model. It's kind of the same thing. A lot of this has it forming into a tropical system, but keeps it well away from land. So no impact from the United States. We've got this 96L. So this was a little bit more questionable if it's actually gonna be making this turn and get pulled north. With this system, basically a stronger system would imply it would actually turn up further north sooner. So if it's if, if it remains on the weaker side, that has a tendency to keep it low and keep it continuing moving off into the west. And if it's able to do that, then it could sneak underneath and get possibly into the Caribbean. That's a lower probability chance because I do think this is going to ramp up but we still have to watch this uh, 95L. It's still a long ways away. I mean, this is where it's gonna be in seven days. So there's nothing to be concerned about in any immediate future from 90, 95L. And here's that wave coming off behind it off uh, the coast of Africa that, that's gonna be possibly forming into another tropical uh, entity at, within the next uh, seven days. So now let's take a look at the uh, the Man and Julie oscillation. I follow this a lot, and let me kind of break this down into layman's terms so you can just you know quickly understand what's going on. Here's a chart over the last month and a half, and you can see the most active phases for tropical development are phase eight, one, two, and three, and this is pri primarily where it's been for the last month, and that's why we've been so active. We've been so active since August the 10th. Okay. Now where it's going, this is the chart from the 15th to the 29th timeframe. So over the next two weeks, it's still predominantly 
puts it in a borderline enhanced phases. Once it gets into phase four, five, six, and seven, that is your most less likely opportunity or chances to form tropical development. But as you can see, it's trying to hug into that favorable phase three. And if it's trying to get into to that four and five range, but it's more or less into the, uh, the neutral zone, the closer it is to the center, the center, uh, and it's been trying to back off and going into a little bit more active phases down, you know, down the line. So it's still not implying that we could see, uh, you know, tropical development. I'm not sure, sure those are going to be, you know, U.S. impact type storms, but we are going to see possible of uh, those tropical development of Odette and Peter. And I think there's even Sam down the line. So. <laughs> So yes, I do feel it's still going to remain active over the next two weeks, but I'm not so sure about possible U.S. impacts. And we'll talk about possible U.S. impacts as we go into October. So now let's delve into this. Here's the latest uh, precipitation index for just the next 16 days. This kind of gives you an overall snapshot of kind of where we're going. And these are above average anomalies between now and the end of the month. And you can definitely see the rains are coming back for the Pacific Northwest and Northern California, getting into Idaho, Idaho taking advantage of that warm blob off here off the Pacific with these warm water ocean temperatures. Down here, it's still implying that we're having pretty wet around the coastal regions down here in the south and having those above average rains continuing for the southeast as well as portions of the mid-atlantic getting into the into the northeast while we remain dry predominantly over the west and the southwest southwestern regions and a good chunk of the central part of the u.s drier than average it's not like saying you're not going to get any rain it's just drier than average in these areas Here's the latest uh, as far as like precipitation goes and what that might look like. We're, yes, we're talking multi-inch rains that are coming back. Some much needed rains for the Pacific Northwest. These will tend to start drying out as they get, it, get more or less into the more central part of the U.S. Pick back up again as they take advantage of those warm Gulf temperatures, but more or less along the coast. So a good chunk of, of the, the Southwest in Texas remains, you know, or, you know, below average you 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 know you average about two and a half inches of rainfall in september for uh say dallas you're probably going to be below average from that you're only you've only picked up less than a tenth of an inch so far uh in september uh which is hardly anything right so i predominantly if you're going to be probably going to be below average for uh the rest of the month so as we extend yeah there's the heavier rains as we go into the southeast as well as the uh the, the northeast and then here's the European model, kind of implying the same thing. Above average rains are coming back for the Pacific Northwest, Northern California. This is pretty interesting. It's seeing some, some, some rains pop up in Central California. I'm not so sure if I'm buying that as of yet. But yeah, this is what the bullseye is, is again, along the coast. So definitely they're hinting in the extended range. Some of these uh, features, which we'll go over, hinting at well above average precipitation anomalies coming back for the western gulf that's kind of hinting at more a little bit more tropical type uh development possibly as we go towards uh the end of september going into going into october into the western gulf so that's some of the some of the things i'll be looking at as well uh, uh, then we'll go over these things here's the latest uh, precipitation over the next uh, 16 days for the European model, I showed you the were you know the above average. This is what it would look like as far as the you know inches. Yes, we're talking a multi-inch rains coming back for the Pacific Northwest, drier drier out in the Southwest and the Central, and then well you know well above as we go into the Southeast and getting it towards the the, the Northeast. Now here's the temperatures. So the temperatures we talked about a cold front coming in from. Uh, the Northwest, I think that's going to come to fruition. Our first fall front of the year, bringing some well, you know, below average of temperature anomalies as we go through the day on Monday. That would extend into mid part of next week, bringing some welcome cooler air for a good chunk of the country as it continues to shift and further off into the east. It will modify. It won't be nearly as cold as as far as the below average anomalies go into the Pacific Northwest. It's about a two day event though, it kind of ramps up. So there's nothing like long-term uh, colder snaps ahead. Uh, there's Friday, again, it kind of, 
meander. So it's you got you got a quick shot of cold air, you got a little bit of a warm up, and then you got another qu quick shot of cooler air. So we're definitely seeing signs of some at least cooler type t weather uh, on the way. So now let's take a look at the the, J, the JMA and the, the the vertical velocity index of what may be become in the tropics. So here's the next five days and looking at this this all this red here that is your sinking air it's very difficult for storms to develop in that type of atmosphere all your blue is your upward rising motion air so you can definitely see over the next five days the only game in town of that upward rising motion air is by the coast and that's why we're seeing that tropical dot trying to develop way out here off the coast of africa there's that there's that system of debt possibly coming up the east coast you see some weakness here into that sinking air and that's why i do feel that's where it's going to start to developing but it's going to be taking it well off uh, the coast and not going to be impacting uh, land so if we extend the view and take you through the 21st through the 26th of the month they're not nearly as uh much sinking air it's less subtle so that's why that system that's coming off the coast of africa has a little bit more opportunity once it hits the caribbean here uh, to possibly yeah get its act together and form, form into a formidable storm but it, all, a lot of the indications are in fact it's going to be get pulled up and away from uh land kind of like a larry right uh, larry got pulled up well at well out well out to sea and i do feel that's what's going to come from from that system off of, the, of 95l if we extend the view and go towards the end of the month now this this is where things start getting interesting a little bit towards the 26th and the october 1st time frame yeah if you see here there's subtle hints of starting to see some weakness uh into the sinking air into the western gulf as we get towards the end of september and here is india down here there's a lot of open as you motion air a lot of the deeper blues that is indication that we're going would be going starting to enter a little bit more of those and more or less those enhanced positive phases of the MJO uh, whenever I see those deeper type blues into the Indian Ocean that implies things to could start getting active again into the into the Atlantics so let's take a look at this over the next uh, 16 days off the coast of India this is well above average rains uh, coming back for them so this is definitely implying that things could start getting bumpy again and closer to home off uh, towards the end of September going into that first week of October and if we extend the view man look at this of the GFS over the next 35 days you got all this right here off the coast of uh, the Indian Ocean here, well above average range. You're talking five times above average deviation. That just says, hey man, things could start really getting active into the Atlantic side. And that it's implying that we could be in the most active phases of the MJO. We're talking phase two and phase three again. So now let's take you back into uh, the, the Atlantic and where we are in the vertical velocity index check this out this is where we live right this is the atlantic there's africa right here this is the caribbean so as we go through time you look at the greens as we get towards the 26th of the month we start to get some greens kind of showing up and that's the model hinting at we could be looking at a little, bit, a little bit more favorable conditions into the western gulf again so we'll have to look out for that but as we go into that october 6 time frame now why is october 6 so imperative well if you go back and you talk about we talked about this too elsa made landfall on july the 6th we are in predominantly active phase two mjo goes around every 46 days that's the cycle for this year and then verbatim grace made landfall 46 days later on august the 21st we remained in phase two at the end of phase two that's when ida hit on August the 29th within those eight days so if we count <laughs> it's 46 days from uh, August 21st when Grace hit in phase two boom there it is I mean we've got some very upward rising motion air right on August October 6 going all the way through predominantly really above average uh, applying very active and we would be yes an active phase two 
phase three of the MJO. So that is no coincidence, guys. I mean, if the shoe fits, wear it. And that's what's on the table for October on the week ahead. So I'm looking at a very active starting to ramp up for between that first week of October and especially as we go through that bulk of the 6th through the 20th there, we could be looking at more impacts uh, to the United States. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.